Good evening, my upper echelonians. Peace and blessings to all. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And make sure you subscribe to the channel because we have the livest boxing talk. It's an open panel. Everybody can say their own opinions because every opinion matters. As we've seen in this fight right here, nobody's opinion is all the way correct. With that being said, shout out to Terrence Crawford, two-time undisputed, the first male to ever do it in boxing history. History was made last night. And shout out to Earl Spence. You went out there, you collected three belts, you was just shocked from the fourth one. Hey, you got up after you got knocked down three times. That shows the heart of a champion. You know, you just got some things you got to go back through. Hopefully, y'all get this fight at 154. With that being said, like I say on my intro, I'm unbiased. I talk boxing talk. Yes, Earl Spence was my guy. But Terrence Crawford, he's a boxer. I root for all American boxers. The only reason me and Crawford had a falling out was because of the negotiations. I, I felt like he didn't do what he was supposed to do. I felt like he was ducking because he didn't want to take it. Because in previous times, he told us he would take less money. But, hey, all said and done, they both got their paper. We both got, we all got the great fight that we deserved. We seen who was better. That's what boxing is about, to see who is better. If we all knew who was better all the time, then it wouldn't be a sport. And Vegas wouldn't make no money. And, hey, hot damn, boy. That man put on a clinic. Terrence Crawford showed me some things, just like Monster Inouye showed me some things, that it was levels to this. And Earl didn't look the same. He looked the same as he did before the weigh-in. Like, I don't know what kind of nutritionist or whatever they did, but Earl was not the bigger guy in the fight. He wasn't able to muscle around Crawford. Crawford was clearly the bigger, stronger fighter and faster. So, see, Earl had the one advantage of being bigger, but, hell, he didn't even have that this fight. And Crawford was like a expert angler reeling in a, a marlin down there in Florida. Like, you can't take him in straight forward. You got to let him play a little bit and fight a little bit. And Crawford was giving Spence some play. He was letting him fight a little bit, and he was steady reeling him in, reeling him in. And, you know, I'm keeping it all the way down the line. I call what I see. That's what I see. Crawford was reeling him in, letting him tie himself out, reeling him in, reeling him in. Then he pulled in that big fish. And congratulations to Crawford and his team. Y'all did the undespected. Hey, the man right there was shocking me. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If you know anything about boxing, a southpaw, their kryptonite is a straight right. A straight right hand is the kryptonite versus a southpaw. Terrence Crawford and his team. They had a brilliant game plan. Hats off. It was brilliant. They turned Terrence Crawford's jab into a straight right. Exactly. The straight right is the Southpaw's kryptonite. Terrence Crawford switching to Southpaw had his dominant hand, which was the right in front, and he was able to fire at will. And it was much quicker than Earl Spence's right hand jab because Earl Spence is a left handed fighter. So Crawford's dominant hand against Earl's weak hand, his dominant hand won every time. And with that dominant hand coming down, Crawford fired that jab like a shotgun. He was popping. He was shooting that buckshot. No, that wasn't even buckshot. That was a slug. And he was slugging Spence, and it was rocking him. And then when he dropped Spence in the second round, in my opinion, that was the end of the fight. Because he rocked Spence, equilibrium. If you could tell, Spence's legs wasn't the same after that fight, after that round. It wasn't. He was off his kilter. Crawford had successfully negated everything Spence wanted to do. He was walking Spence down. He was backing Spence up. He did everything that he needed to do to win. He kept being first with the jab. And that's what everybody talked about, Spence's jab. He leaves with the jab. Spence got the incredible jab. Crawford got to take away the jab. Well, he took away from the jab. And Bobak told him to come over top and counter it, and he did. And shout out to Derrick James. He was giving some good instructions over there. Earl just couldn't do it. He was getting hit. He was getting hit hard. And not taking away nothing from Crawford because it was a, a great win. Earl looked at drained. He's just spent too much time at 147. He looked at weak. Crawford hit him in the shoulder and backed him up. The man was the same size almost as he was in weigh-in. Like, I don't know why he didn't get Blu-ray fitness for this fight right here. Because what he did, it looked like he overtrained, he was weight drained, and he just wasn't strong. 
Like his attributes was gone and he looked it off kilter, looked it kind of slow, kind of like Frank Martin did in his fight at first. I don't know what the problem is, but I do know one thing. Bud is a force to be reckoned with. I used to think him and Boots would be a great fight, but Boots need to um get a few more fights under his belt before he come messing with that man right there because that's a bad man right there. You the illest nigga in Nebraska. Yeah. Crawford is a bad man. My hat's off to him. I can't take nothing from him. I'm going to have to do a highlight round for him. But this your boy, Upper Echelon. Peace and business to all. Y'all hit that like, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.